Uh, my doctor's office is that bad too, but um <laughs> How about you all over here about this past week? What's been uh, going on at your house? Electricity, no electricity, lots of stuff in your yard. How about your neighborhood? Who who needs help in your neighbor? Do you all see any relationship to who had power two years ago <coughs> in terms of who does or does not have power? If you had power two years ago, you didn't have power this time. They're sharing the spirit. I had no power. We're uh, more than two days without power. And we had a tree fall in front of our crossroad driveway. And Tom was able to take care of it, but his uh, chainsaw is electric. <laughs> 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 so then it's like, okay, that'll work. Oh, okay. So he was out using his little handsaw, and neighbors, because our neighborhood was pretty bad, they were just cruising the neighborhood and saying, I had nothing else better to do. And he jumped out of the truck and the pop dropped into the tree, so we had to get out of our driveway. <laughs> what would you have done differently a week ago that you know now? What would you have done differently? I did it. That was the, the thing after the last ice storm. Uh -huh. I called up Generac and said, I want power. Now, it took six months to go through getting the slow folks at the city to do all their approval. You know, three weeks later, I had a generator sitting on a pad in my backyard. Is yours it's noisy? It's like a lawnmower box. But you know what? When you power box, you don't care. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's what I noticed about and, people with that. <laughs> um, so we had, um, uh, so we were, the power was out for 55 hours. That thing ran 55 hours continuous. And the best thing we were doing, we went around, uh, my wife was out skiing, you know, she just, she went and checked with all of the neighbors and some of them came over and charged their phones because their cars were in their garage and they couldn't get their garage door open. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, um, uh, <coughs> others, and, and there was another one who was, uh, uh, I came and borrowed a can of her, you know, the, the great invention of, you know, of the, the discovery from the last high storm was that people had electric can openers. They had lots of food in their hand with electric can openers. And so, so what did you do? Well, oh, we did it. And then uh, Thursday night, uh, there one, one of my daughter's uh, best friends was due to have a, a C section for her third child on Friday morning. Okay, she had it before, so she did. They had this all scheduled up. And, uh, so they live up in Griffith Springs. They had no water, no power. And so, uh, Rachel and Lamar came over to our house and spent the night at our house because we had the power from the generator. And then, because they would be in the hospital, we'd be in the hospital like 7 30 the next morning. So, uh, we put them up, uh, there. So, uh, our, our generator made Rachel comfortable the night before her surgery. So, that was the, that was what That's good. That's a good story. That's like a Mary and Joseph story. <laughs> there was no room in the inn, but there was room with the generator. There's room here. I would suggest, I bought a generator after the last snow and get two years ago, whatever it was. Mine's not, mine's a generac, but it's not on the path. But it's a 7,000 watt deal that you can set out in the yard and run, and it, it will power my low house. I know um, I whined about one after living in Mexico with hurricanes. Same thing, yeah. except it's worse. It's summer, it's hot, and you can hear that neighbor's generator. And you just want to go in and snatch it out because <laughs> you're dripping hot. But so my husband bought me one for my birthday. It's a <laughs> generator. He goes, Here, you got your generator. Well, we never ever used it. 
And when I moved to Jackson, Mississippi, it was stolen out of my loft. Uh, uh, not only was it stolen, it was stolen on my husband's birthday. Uh, and uh, I said, Charles, you can't use this in heaven. Yeah. So why are you taking this back? <laughs> but uh, yeah, generators are interesting how you can help friends and uh, frustrate your neighbors. <laughs> Well, you got to just make sure you keep the tank. You got to make sure you have no gas. Yes. Well, when it comes to the yes. no power, you can't run the gas in the car. So, yeah. lots of it natural gas. So. Just when people start talking about when can you use natural gas, and I'm giving serious thought to the community on the propane tank out back because I'm going to switch it over from one to the other. Yeah, we had a deal tank like that in Mexico, and they come fill it three times a year. Yeah. <laughs> So, we lower sound boards for generators, though. What does? Yeah, when we have power, we can lower sound Yeah, that's the way it works now. Yes. Yeah. 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 The one thing I would do differently, I just didn't really pay attention. I was underestimating the storm, not for myself, but for the students that I teach, because back in two years ago, the college students that I worked with were. They were really hurting. And we're not really going to know until Monday. He's made with an apartment, so we want a holder. Um, you know, the university has uh, a, a whole apartment that is there to, to assist them, but the students don't always know to reach out. Yes. Right? And so they'll come to us and they're like, well, I don't have any water, or we'll go take a shower, or, you know, in, in, in this place or that place. And, you have food, so we all have food. You know, most of our apartments have food pantries there for the students. Um, but it's uh, it's it's it really <laughs> hard, you know, and they don't have the funds to fix their cars and free small on them. You know, so we'll know more for um, But yeah, I you'll normally be sent out you know, a survey and say, hey, tell me about your adventure and kind of what you need still. Because they, they just don't you know, have you talked to your parents? That's always a good one to ask. Is that they don't always reach out. By the way, when uh, my nephew's at the University of Georgia and he had COVID and the fraternity house told him to stay put in the house, you're not going home, you're not spreading this everywhere you live. So can you imagine a fraternity house with a bunch of guys that are all sick? COVID, but uh, no mother to take care of, no mother to take care of. But you know what, they survived it. So um, it's, it is the different age groups how you deal with things. Um, any little ones? Well, our grandkids came to our house several times because they didn't have the power more than Austin, so they uh, they spent the last couple of days in the house. They're, you know, they're not so more. Did you ask about things that you might do? You know, like, what are you going to do now? Uh, the other thing I'm you know, thinking about doing is following up somebody like Patriot Supply and getting you know, a month's worth of food. It's, you know, last for, you know, uh -huh. 20 years or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Or whatever. But yeah. it's, you know, you can ask the shop full of preservatives that you need food, so you want to need food. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. It's good, it's good, you're right. You need food, you need food. One school district was, you could probably get a guideline and pick up food because those are the kids that were on the oh, yeah. program. So, Seriously, if this is the worst national disaster we have here, be okay. I live in Corpus Christi, and I was 15 in Hurricane City, and Corpus wiped out the whole thing. I mean, brick homes were being leveled to the foundation. Our house had the roof ripped off. We were without power for a month. Down there, you talk about mosquitoes. It was horrible. I know we had a couple of bad hurricanes in Cancun, and uh, the one that was Category 5. Our godson was three, and he just wouldn't talk about it. And when he was a freshman at SMU in Dallas, his first weekend, we got hit really bad on Pine Island outside of Fort Myers. And he's our godson, and he called, and he said, 
I can take a bus and come down and, and come to a church. And I think of his name, Robert Henry Schmitz Rodriguez. But um, I said, Robert, the problem is there aren't buses everywhere in the United States like there are in Mexico. In Mexico, you can go anywhere by you know, bus all over the country. But he had not talked about hurricanes you know, since he was three years old. He was so almost traumatized. So he wanted to you know, come help. He called his parents in Cancun and said, I want to go to Florida and you know, help in the Red Hands Church. So um, it, it, it is good to keep tabs on how young people perceive you know, these disasters. Well, they, in, from my experience, they often just, you know, they're not always real self aware. So they just push off, which is a positive for survival. But then you start adding extra stress, like you get the midterms, and then they start to like have an issue where you're like, why are you having an issue with this? This is a big deal. I mean, it's a test, but you have a lot of tests. Why, why now are you having sign of anxiety and all this? And it's often because they just haven't dealt with whatever happened before, and they just have to talk it out, and then often they're okay. But it's um, interesting to work with them right now through all of this stuff. It's interesting to be keeping back for at school in Nacogdoches and know that it was actually warmer than ours and they used to get up in school and everything was fine, but you know, we, we lost cell, we lost data, we lost electricity, so we couldn't contact them. And so this was the first time where they were in a safe place and we weren't. And you can see that Katie was, was really bothering Katie mm -hmm. and she didn't know. We were good. Yeah, and Jack yeah, just assumed we'd call her as a problem, but we didn't realize we, so we could. Yeah, she was really happy to hear from us finally. And it's kind of like, she's like, why didn't you, you know, test me or let me know? There's a great commercial on TV, it's a, like a board, a group sitting at a table. And this man walks in, and everybody's a little agitated, and he goes, well, how's that feel? And they're all like this, he goes, that's how all our customers feel at a gate in an airport, when you do not get on the mic and explain why the flight is running late. He says, if you would just get on the mic and say, we're running 20 minutes late today because we need to check this through a goal. People will say, oh, okay. But it's that not letting people know that. Yeah, sure. <laughs> and if that's what throws us into the environment, it's, it's not going Well, I, I, I think it's also not, it, it, it's, it's not knowing, but I think it's also feeling um, maybe like you're not being attended to, yeah. like you've shown up. And you have a relationship, but people aren't aware of what your needs are, or they aren't maybe interested in them. I think that, that, that that's what that's where some lines go if they don't know what's happening. Well, and I think too though, um, it's just if you're not knowing you don't even know until it's like the normal reverse. If you don't know where the parents are now. Well, I heard something really beautiful this video from you. She's talking about caring for her parents. And she said, somebody said, are you their caregiver or something? And she said, I am partnering with them in this transition of life. I just thought that was a beautiful way to think about parents. Well, I have to remind myself that because there's times when I'm like, okay, you are not, you know, you are not responding the way you would have had when you were 50. Mm -hmm. yes. And I start to feel frustrated. I'm like, well, that's not what we're doing. You know, I am just trying to help them. And I say that to them because I don't want them ever to feel threatened. Like, I don't think they're capable. Because if we go down that road, we're not going anywhere. Right? It's, that's no, no way to progress. So, you know, I said losing that hurdle is very frustrating. Yeah. To, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, 
I work hard to come up with that as a way to bridge the conversation between that. Good job. And that's the key. I think you're so right because I have two words. I should understand this. Parents. I think too, if I get frustrated, it's often because I have a sense of like I'm making an assumption about what they think and feel like and where they are. And I don't know that. I don't I can look at something on the outside, but I don't really know. And I don't know and it's a lot of stuff that I don't know that they're purposefully you know, I do. And that's okay. I mean, there are moments when I'm like, yeah, you know, I wish you saw me put the walker in my mom's car in the car, it's kind of still out there. But I point that stuff out because it's a crisis and I'm trying to track it. So far, I'm going to do That's why that, I use that phraseology. So I actually wouldn't feel that way she was sitting right yeah. there by the yeah. 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 yeah, but yeah. but it's the pain. Yeah. 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 You provide her like, hey, if this happens, or something like this is what you should do. Yeah. Instead of yeah. 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 Relationship with that pharmacist. 